Well, greetings back here to BroncoNationNews.com. Boise State fans, PJ Reigns with you. Debut of a new show here. Really excited about this. We're going to do this every Wednesday, hopefully around noon, but we'll work it around our schedules. But uh, Matt Bowsher, you know him, you love him, you hear him yelling at the refs every game courtside. Uh, former Boise State basketball player, one of the uh, top realtors in town as well. And Matt, uh, this is going to be a lot of fun, man. I appreciate you and your support of uh, my new venture here, and I'm looking forward to making this a regular thing. When you came to me with this idea, what did it take me? Ten seconds to say I'm in basketball and Boise State. I'm in. Well, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, remind folks that maybe aren't quite familiar with your playing career in terms of uh, for the first episode here, uh, when you played and maybe a little bit of your background at Boise State. Yeah, 2004 to 2008, I was here at Boise State, played guard, um, had a great time. Greg Graham was my head coach. Um, our senior year, we had a lot of success. We won the regular season and the conference championship and played in the NCAA tournament. And that was a neat deal because it had been quite a while since Boise State had been back to the big dance and um, parlayed that into a six year professional career in Europe and then moved back to Boise where I'm from here in the Treasure Valley and have been going for my real estate career for the last seven to eight years. How did you get into the real estate business and why have you at your young age been so successful? Um, it's competitive, just like basketball. So my whole business model and my employees and my team, I, I structure just like I did on the court, kind of as the team captain and the leader on the basketball court, I try to, you know, motivate and inspire and do the same thing with my business. And, um, I didn't definitely didn't get a master's degree and bachelor's degree at Boise state to be a real estate agent. I wasn't even on the spectrum. I, um, I got my license for investment purposes and one deal led to another. And I kind of started getting referrals and I'm like this this could be a business and it's, it's grown and it's grown because the people I work with are amazing. What would be the, uh, the way that folks can get in touch if they're looking to sell or buy a home with you? Um, Bowser real estate.com, Instagram, Facebook. Um, there's a lot of avenues. If, if you're trying to get a hold of me, um, we try to get, get back to you really quickly and be, you know, very available. Awesome. Bowser Real Estate, uh, again, part of the Amherst Madison Real Estate Advisors, and you can just uh, Google it if it's easy enough, but it's just BowserRealEstate.com, I believe, as well, Matt. So let's talk a little basketball here. We saw you courtside last night. Uh, you got maybe better seats than I do. Front row there, uh, really nice. Uh, what 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 was your take? 86-82 uh, overtime loss for Boise State. Uh, obviously played much better than the Bakersfield game the other day. It was two good teams, but in the end, another uh, hard-fought loss for the Broncos. Yeah, it was a great college atmosphere. You know, I thought the crowd was great for the amount of people we had there. It was intense. I mean, during that defensive stop there at the end of regulation, that's that's a loud arena with COVID last year. I haven't heard it that loud in a while. Um, but I was really curious to see how they'd come out after the worst offensive performance I think I've ever seen the, the Friday before with Cal State Bakersfield. I thought it was brilliant to put uh, Tyson Degenhardt in the starting lineup because you don't have now so many people that demand the ball. I mean, he hardly dribbles the ball. He swings it. He moves it well. He sets screens. He pops. He can stretch the defense. I think he's tough as nails. Uh, Tyson's a winner, and I'm, I'm excited he's a freshman. Um, I think that was brilliant. What do they do? The first three minutes, they come out, they punch him in the mouth, and they're up 11-0 to zero with yep. that new starting five. So I thought that was a good adjustment. Um the free throws are a head scratcher. It's obviously between the ears. I bet in practice today they made 50 or 60 in a row, but it's it's different, obviously, when there's a lot of tension drawn to it. And that was the difference of the game. Um, without 12 of 26. 12 of 26 from the free throw line. They uh, entered the game as one of the worst free throw shooting teams in the nation. Uh, there's only seven or eight teams in the country that have a lower percentage. I mean, they're under 60%, Matt. You, you know, uh, free throws are, are supposed to be free. I mean, to be a 59% shooting as a team, when you've got mostly guards that are shooting these free throws, as a former player, I mean, what, what why – are they as bad as they are? Do you think shooting free throws? I think you got to go to the, you don't, this is what you don't want to happen. You don't want to make a big deal about it where then you don't want to go to the line and you're not being aggressive going to the rack. I think you just got to shoot yourself out of it. I mean, sometimes you go and you just got to have confidence, shoot yourself out of it. And it's just like business things go hard. What do you do? You try harder, you go harder and you plow through it. You don't try to, you know, dodge it. So I think they got to keep getting the line, getting the line. Nobody really took a lot of free throws. You know, sometimes you get a, you miss your first two and then you hit eight in a row and you start getting a rhythm. But when guys are going one for two or oh for one, the, the percentages look terrible, but um, key jab was the only one that got to the line a significant amount yesterday. I think he went five for 11. That was, yep. um, but I mean, he obviously had a tremendous game and carried the offensive load. 
Well, why, why do you think, you know, you talk about it getting being contagious and things, but when the fans are getting a little antsy and it's a close game and you know every shot might matter, I mean, even Max Rice, who's you know could make free throws in his sleep, walks down for the freebie on the technical and, and he bricks one. I mean, it just seemed like, uh, especially as the game got on and the fans got a little restless, I mean, how, how hard is that when, you know, you're a good free throw shooter, but you know that no one else on your team is making them and then it just kind of builds and, and the crowd's antsy and it just seems like it just kind of snowballs on you. There's no sport in the world that deals more with momentum and confidence in basketball. Nothing even close. And you look in the second half, and all of a sudden, Pavla comes in, hits a huge three, and then Shaver hits one. And next thing you know, we made seven out of eight threes. And it is contagious. So, you know, somebody starts hitting them, others will hit them, and then it's um, – it, it really does snowball and it's, I bet next game, I bet everything's fine and it's figured out. And then, you know, we look back and we smile, but they're tough as nails. I'd like to see a little more, you know, a little more vocalness on the court, a little more on court leadership. You know, everybody's never really been in that captain leadership role. So I, I hope that'll progress as we find our identity right now. Um, I don't think our identity has been discovered. You know, it's, it's December finally today. What do you think uh, Leon was saying that he scheduled this hard for a reason? And a lot of fans are, you know, three and four and already saying, oh, the at-large, you know, hopes are gone and all this. But I think Leon was kind of, you know, building this. So by the time conference play comes, uh, this team will be been through some battles, been through some wars. I mean, they've already played four top 100 teams. And I know they're one and three in those games. But what, what is it about playing tougher teams early? And maybe if you play, you know, uh, seven or eight of the Utah Valleys and you're six and oh and feeling great, but you haven't really done anything, which, you know, kind of is what we saw last year where they played a lot of bad teams at the beginning of the season. Everyone thought they were great. As a player, what what can it do to you maybe lose some games, but you're 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 finding out some of your flaws? And do you think that uh, this stretch can help them as they move forward in the season? I think so. I mean, last year we ran through our preseason. I think we were fourteen and two. We hadn't faced a lot of adversity, and there you know they didn't have to mix with a lot of different lineups and situations. And everybody knew Derek was kind of our player. And this year, I think it's good because now you got Tyson and Pavle playing more, which they need to. I mean, they're they're immediate sparks. They're going to be huge for the program for the next four years. And, you know, we're playing Washington State, who's really good. Tulsa beat Oregon State, who comes here on Friday. And then you got, I mean, St. Mary's. They're going to be right at the top of the WCC behind Gonzaga. So it's not a cupcake schedule, um, but we got to figure it out because Mountain West this year is going to be a lot better than it was last year. You mentioned uh, Kijab, 27 points. Uh, we've seen ACOT at times. Uh, you mentioned they're not being a Derek Olsen, but there's three or four other kind of guys on any night, I guess, could go for a lot of points. We saw Marcus Shaver kind of taking over the game last night. Uh, is that is it better when you have – you know, what's the dynamic like? You obviously want a guy that, like an Austin that you know can go get you a lot of points on most nights, but is it better to have more balance? But yet, if they're all, you know, if, if no one's going to get you 20, sometimes you can struggle to score a little bit. Uh, what do you make, look at the makeup of this team? I don't think there's anything wrong with a bunch of guys averaging between 9 and 14, um, but you got to have guys who can get a bucket. You can't go like yesterday, four or five minutes without a field goal. I mean, you got to get a guy the ball that can get a bucket or get a, you know, an easy bucket for somebody else. And I think that's what they're trying to figure out. Um, if ACOS is going to be our point guard, I mean, we got to have a good assist to turnover ratio for him or, you know, and him get other guys going and make, make the game easier. Um, but we got to be better without the ball too. I think it's a lot of dribbling and it's, it's really easy to guard somebody when, you know, everybody can see what's going to happen. I think we need to be a little more unpredictable and the guys need to zip it around a little better. So you were down there on, on the uh, defensive end in the second half, uh, 35 seconds left. It's a tie game, and uh, they come down there, and then uh, Abu Kijab draws the charge. The place is going nuts. There's 17 seconds left. Boise State's got a chance to win. What did you make of the final 17 seconds after that? Boise State at first doesn't call timeout, and then they, they see what's going on, and they see what the defensive look they're getting from SLU. And with about seven seconds left, Leon Rice does decide to call timeout. Usually he doesn't. Usually he lets them play it out, but he said he just saw something he did like from the defense thought it would be better to draw up a play and then what'd you make of that I guess calling timeout versus not and then the play itself they clear everybody out they get it to Acott he gets you know about to the elbow and there was some contact if he'd have gone into the defender he probably gets a foul but he's fading away and then uh, air balls it and the game goes to overtime what'd you make of that last 17 seconds I love the ball in his hands. He's big. He can take little guys inside. He can get by bigger guys. Um, shoot, he's shooting 45% from three this year. I mean, he's been he's been our best three-point shooter, him and Pavle. But I love the play. He gets where he wants to go, gets him in the air. And in that situation, being a vet, you go right through his chin and they call a foul. You make a free throw, the game's over. Um, obviously, Monday morning quarterback, uh, couch 
quarterback. It's a lot easier to say it now after you see the replay, but uh, the ref can't make that call when you're fading away. So um, I like the last play call. I really do getting him the ball, being aggressive. Um, I don't think it was, I think it was, you know, we did, we got what we wanted and you jump forward and you make one out of two and the game's over. Personally, I would have liked Marcus Shaver driving to the basket there. I just think he was doing some things. He also has that ability to pull up. I don't think ACOT was the wrong choice. They have two or three guys that could do it. But personally, when I was sitting there, I was thinking, okay, this guy that's been on fire hitting 40-foot threes or whatever, and he has the ability to get to the rack with contact. I would have gone Shaver. You would have gone ACOT or whoever. I mean, that's beauty of basketball. There's about four different guys. But uh, one kind of, I don't know if negative is right. Where do you, yeah, I was a negative. Devin Air Dutrieve only plays about 13 minutes, only has one point. And you mentioned Tyson Degenhart starting. That's because Devin Air Dutrieve came out of the starting lineup. And reading between the lines and some of Leon's comments, it kind of sounds like he's uh, wanting everybody to buy into the team a little bit more, so to speak. And so uh, he, I don't want to say he was pouting on the bench, but he didn't look all that interested in the second half over there. And um, they, they stuck with Pavle and Degenhart. Hart late in the game and for most of overtime, you know, the guys that had gotten him there. What's your make on, uh, you know, I would assume you can't pull Tyson Degenhardt out of the starting lineup now, but how do you get Devin Air Dutrieve to, to stay bought in here? Because uh, he's a the guy they need if this team's going to do anything. There's 200 minutes and Devin is going to get a lot of playing time this year. And I think he's got to have, you know, confidence and stay in and good body language. And he's one of the best players on the court. I mean, he's, he's an incredible talent. He's a good defender. He can hit shots. I mean, he played really good against Ole Miss and Temple and those wins. Um, he's going to be a vital part. If we're going to win the Mountain West, I mean, we have to have all of them. And I think they're going to start playing with smaller, a little bit smaller lineups. If Maladin goes out, you put, you know, maybe a Boo and Tyson both inside and then you get, Pavlis some more time as well as, you know, Devin Air Shaver and ACOT. But um, there's a lot of ways to, to mix and match and get guys minutes. And I don't think, you know, they all need to play 35 minutes, but they're going to have to be out there a lot of the game. You're obviously a, a former player. You're a big supporter of the program, a big supporter of Leon. Uh, but as you know, he's got his detractors in this town and, and some of the people that aren't maybe thrilled with the lack of, uh, you know, getting to the tournament and things like that. And some of the postseason success, what, what would you, what would your message be in terms of the, they're three and four, as I said, they've played some hard games, but they've pretty much lost them all um, other than the Ole Miss game, you know, for, for fans that obviously were frustrated last night with the free throws and losing another game, what would your message be, I guess, to, to Bronco nation uh, that's watching this or listening to this on the podcast later about uh, the state of the program and uh, the, the confidence they should or shouldn't have in Leon Rice. I think he called the guys out rightfully so after the, the performance on Friday. And what did they do? They responded. They came out and they, they fought hard. And that shows that they're buying in to, to Burns and Barsh and Coach Tim and the whole, you know, the whole the whole crew. Um it's a tough, it's a tough role. I mean, you lose, but you miss free throws or you miss a field goal. Uh, you know, Nick Saban and these coaches can't kick field goals and they can't make free throws. And in practice, you know, you make them all the time. So, I mean, you coach Calipari has historically had the worst free throw shooting teams, but he's, you know, one of the most successful coaches, but um, I think you make adjustments and I don't think our team is going to be a, a three point shooting team this year. They're going to be more tough. Like, you know, the Detroit Pistons or the, you know, those kind of bad boys where they got to beat people up, get inside, be tough. And then through rhythm, they'll hit the threes. Once the crowd's going crazy, they get a steal, you know, more that way. But um, to, to jack, you know, 30 plus three pointers and make them at a low percentage, we're not going to win very many games doing that. I don't think we're going to see many 86, 82 games with this team. It's probably going to be in the sixties and it's going to be more of a defensive grinded out uh, type of game. But I guess final thing, Matt, before we let you go, I mean, you got Tulsa coming up on Friday. What, what's your confidence level still that they can kind of get this thing rolling still. It's still really early in the season, but three and four obviously is not where anybody wanted them to be. No, they got to be Tulsa. I mean, we, that's a must win. You're at home. You've now you've lost, you know, two games at home and more than they normally lose in a whole season, you know, especially non-conference. So I, I think the guys got to look each other in the eye and, you know, really realize it's it's um, it's a collective effort. No one guy needs to do it all. If everybody buys in and gives up their body, um, you know, good things can happen. And I think Friday is going to be really fun. I think it's going to be a good atmosphere. And I mean, I, even though we lost yesterday, I was as disappointed as anybody in there. But I, you know, I left saying I got a really good basketball game to watch on a Tuesday night and they gave it everything and it came down to a couple plays. And what more can you ask for in the month of November? Yeah. And I know you paid well more than that, but they had tickets for like 10 bucks for fans. So you came and got your money's worth. And, and sure. I mean, when that charge happened, that was as loud as, like you said, that was as loud as I've heard that arena and 
you know, a couple of years at least. I mean, it was it was uh, it, it gets your adrenaline going and you're thinking, OK, we're going to have a special special finish here and just quite couldn't make the last shot and finish it off. Uh, thanks, Brett, for the comment. Got to make the free throws. Dayton was saying about Tulsa. I think it's got to got to shoot better at the line. And uh, you're going to have to you know, I think you have to buckle down and play some defense again and win, win a low scoring game. But I think the obvious answer is make your free throws. I mean, they got what, 15 offensive rebounds and only had 10 turnovers and still lost. I mean, it was the second game in a row where a lot of this. Yeah, a lot of the stats say they should have won. won. Yep, yeah, they just missed free throws. Won. And that's St. Louis that, team. I mean, I think that St. Louis team's going to have a good year. They're seven and one now. They're scrappy. I mean, I think they're going to have a good year, just like St. Bonaventure. Um, I bet they'll be, you know, NCAA tournament type teams. Well, hey, Matt, appreciate your time. We're looking forward to this. A lot of fun. And we'll kind of continue to build this. And maybe we'll bring on some of your former players or friends as guests. And we'll kind of have some fun with this going forward. Kind of want to just get the first one out of the way and make sure all the programs were uploaded on our computers correctly and the audio worked and the video and that we're good to go. So uh, hope folks that are looking to buy or sell a home will check out Bowser Real Estate. Again, BowserRealEstate.com. Matt's the the best in the business. And uh, Matt, proud to call you a friend. Uh, Appreciate you jumping on board here and uh, supporting us with this venture. Hopefully it's a a win win for both of us moving forward and i do appreciate the time sir thanks for all the boise state fans bj everything you do the early mornings late nights all the information you give us we are very spoiled and we appreciate you thank you man appreciate that uh awesome. we'll, we'll, i'll give you a discount next month for saying that hey matt bousher <laughs> uh thanks we'll talk to you later matt bousher show we'll be back three o'clock jeremiah dickey will join me live as we keep the big guests rolling today uh thanks a lot folks we'll talk to you later at uh bronco nation news bronco nation news.com